Hi everyone. So today we're talking questions. I wanted to give you guys a good solid 10 questions, share a little bit more about myself. Some of them were sent in tw via Twitter and some were sent in on Instagram. The first one is from Veronica at 14 BLAVK Swift. You started modeling before discovering that you had scoliosis. So when you discovered, did you think for a moment to stop or end your modeling career? Well, I'm really glad that you asked this question because this is June and it's Scoliosis Awareness Month. And that's an important question. When I found out I had scoliosis, I was around 14 and I actually started modeling, or I was discovered when I was 13 after doing like a model search competition. And it was tough because modeling had presented itself to me as this sort of opportunity for escapism and traveling the world and potentially really great income. So when I found out that there was a deformity that was happening in my body, it definitely wasn't exciting news and I absolutely um, feared that I wouldn't be able to be a model anymore. And those curvatures of my spine progressed severely over my high school years to the point that had it not been for my spinal fusion surgery, I probably would not have been able to have this career. So if anything, scoliosis has taught me to be really grateful for um, the fact that I've been able to do this career for so long and have such great success. At Into Daylights 13, what do you miss the most when you're traveling for work? Well, that's easy. My boyfriend, my dog, and my own bed. Yeah. This one's from Ro at Marhunt Arg, Marhunt Argentina. What's up? What's the best part of going to red carpets, galas, etc.? I love that you asked this because I just left a fitting for the CFDAs and I was thinking about this. And it's so much fun to collaborate with different creative people that are the best at their profession. Red carpets are all about collaboration. The best part is that you're working with the best makeup artist, stylist, hairstylist, and you're taking a designer's vision and you're trying to enhance it and complement it the best way that you can, but also giving your own spin to it that reflects your personal style. It's really fun to create that story and just get dressed up. Right, next one. At Benjamin Boyd, what did you love about growing up in a small rural town in North Carolina? Funny you ask that because growing up in a small town in North Carolina, I'm from Wilson and we call it Wide Awake Wilson because it's not wide awake. <laughs> and I was kind of bored a lot of the time growing up, but now I look back and I kind of romanticize about being bored. Like that's okay. Life now feels so fast. And what was great about growing up in a small town like Wilson is that there was that Southern charm and some simplicity and community. And I love just sort of driving around on long country roads and blasting music as loud as possible and just getting lost and figuring it all out. And usually with like a big Dr. Pepper in my lap from Cruisers. Not an ad for Dr. Pepper. I used to just drink a lot of Dr. Pepper. At DQOTO17, how do you feel so confident with your scoliosis and how do you cover it up? Well, Funny you ask that. I'm glad that you think I always feel confident with my scoliosis, but part of my job is to project confidence. And some days I'm not feeling myself, but it might look like I am. Um, scoliosis has definitely given me a lot of insecurities about myself on top of my already human insecurities, but I've tried to um, use them to make me stronger, to motivate me to want to be stronger and to be healthier and not focus on those insecurities because scoliosis issues are, are something that are beyond my control. So um, it's healthy to be honest about those insecurities and sometimes I do cover up my scoliosis but also sometimes I show it off and I think that's really important too. Right now is June, it's Scoliosis Awareness Month and I plan on sharing some photos of my back and showing off my scoliosis because I'm really proud of it. Like I said, it's taught me so much. It's also taught me how to be resilient and that I'm capable of handling a lot of things, which is exactly why I wore this necklace around 
my neck as a reminder of how far I've come. One side says anigal, which is French for uneven, as in uneven spine. It's the only pretty scoliosis word I could find to put on a necklace. And the other side is resilient, just as a reminder. You can get all of these on the Pluma Italia website. Perfect for scoliosis wear in this month. For yourself or friend or for anyone going through a really hard time. And sometimes you want to cover things up, but sometimes you also want to embrace um, what makes you different. And sometimes the things that make you different make you the best, and I truly believe that. I'm Nama Pira at Npira. What is the best quality that you notice your best friend or friend to have? It's a good one. Um, well, it's hard to choose just one, but loyalty, kindness, sense of humor, positive energy, and being humble. Just somebody that I want to be, that's fun to be around and that I aspire to be like. I think that's really important in a friend. You wanna surround yourself with great people because they're reflections of you at the end of the day. At Real Dini Salaz, how's your lobbying efforts been going in respects to scoliosis funding? Well, this is a cause that I care deeply about. I have some plans for the future for advocating for more scoliosis research funding, especially in regards to developing countries where um, there are some very severe musculoskeletal conditions that we don't even see on a regular basis. So, you know, it's easy for me to focus on the problems here, but then you see what's going on elsewhere in the world and it's even worse. So overall, I think that awareness for scoliosis is important and it is needed and research funding needs to continue to happen to evolve treatment and to make it more accessible for people all around the world. And I have been to Capitol Hill now two times to advocate for orthopedic research funding, which is under the umbrella of the NIH, which is the National Institute of Health. Both times were completely fascinating. The first year I went, I learned how to lobby for a bill and I got to ask for change face-to-face -face with lawmakers. So it was really exciting to find out that the year that I came back that all that effort did make a change in one very fundamental way. And we got the Next Generation Researchers Act passed. The United States loses a lot of researchers to more attractive salaries abroad. And I think that we should put more money into research funding because eventually we want to be able to evolve treatment for scoliosis so that we find better alternatives that are less invasive than surgeries. And I highly recommend any of you out there that are passionate about anything to take action and to go out there and you can make a difference and to talk to congressmen and women and for them to connect a story to a face helps them have more empathy for the cause that you're supporting. Research has already evolved so much within the decade that I had my surgery. So that is very promising for what the future holds in terms of scoliosis treatment. Well, now the Game of Thrones is finished, I have to think of my new series. Um, Big Little Lies is coming back, which I'm pumped for. Meryl Streep entering the cast, that's a big deal. Handmaid's Tale, love Handmaid's Tale. Uh, the Crown, and uh, the, the, the Jack Ryan. Because Jack Ryan is a sleeper, I feel like not everyone knows about it, but everyone needs to know about it. I watched it when I had the flu and I was so addicted. Just binge watch it the whole week. Especially if you love CIA and stuff like that, then you will like Jack Ryan for sure. Right. Melissa from at Wild Eye Styles. What's the best piece of advice your mom ever gave you? Life's tough, life's not fair, and nobody likes a bragger. Bionic Gal at Therzy, Favorite form of exercise post scoliosis operation? I get this question all the time and I completely understand why everyone asks this because after my spinal fusion surgery, I felt so fragile and it was hard to even imagine working out. Um, but I'm not a medical professional. I cannot tell you what exercises are right to do after your spinal fusion surgery. But what did work for me was when I finally got the courage to start working out, I started doing yoga. 
And I liked that because I help, it helps me feel stronger and also it incorporated so many breathing exercises and that helped me feel like it would be possible to transition into other exercises. But it was tough in the beginning. I remember I had just moved to New York City right after and I was walking around a ton and I started modeling, which is already kind of physical in itself when you're posing in a high heels all day or walking around in high heels. So um, for me, that was enough in the beginning. That was already a lot. And eventually I transitioned into yoga. And then after that, I started doing all types of different exercises. But the main thing is, you know, keeping your core strong and engaged and um, stretching to just manage the pain. That's something I'll always have to keep up with for sure.